Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining this Dataversity webinar, Improve Your Sales Analytics with Alteryx at Microsoft Power BI, sponsored today by Alteryx. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we'll be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. And if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Just click the chat icon in the upper right for that feature. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce our speakers for today, Miguel Martinez, Dan uh, Gnanchel, and Ali Saeed. Dan Gnanchel is an Alliance Marketing Manager at Alteryx. Dan currently focuses on partner marketing efforts with Microsoft. He has held several roles in his career where he has produced a strong record in driving both customer and revenue growth. Miguel is the Senior Product Marketing Manager for Microsoft Power BI. He oversees the digital strategy for the Cloud Business Intelligence Solution. His background includes formal training and practical experience in marketing and engineering. Ali is a solutions engineer at Alteryx. Ali has spent three years with Alteryx providing customers with solutions to their data and analytic needs, ranging from data preparation to predictive modeling. And with that, let me turn it over to Dan to get us started. Hello and welcome. Thanks, Shannon, for that introduction. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, just so everyone knows, we're very excited for today's webinar, and we're also excited to be presenting along with Microsoft. And I know we have many people here today that are data and sales professionals, so welcome. Your work with sales data is crucial to your organization's success, and because of this fact, it is very important for you to identify ways in which you can optimize your work when it comes to sales analytics. And so our goal in today's webinar is to show you how you can reduce the time and complexity spent when working with sales data. Basically, we want you to see and learn how you can spend less time getting your data put together, prepared for analysis, and then visualized for insights by reducing the overall amount of time it takes you to go through the data process. And so before we jump into talking about what that looks like and what that involves, um, let me go ahead and briefly introduce to you the technologies that we will be using to uh, further explain and show you how we go through the data process. And the two technologies that we'll be using is obviously Alteryx as well as Microsoft Power BI. And so in terms of Alteryx, just a quick introduction to that so everyone's aware. Alteryx is the leading platform for self-service analytics. Basically, Alteryx Analytics provides analysts with a unique ability to easily prep, blend, and analyze data using a repeatable workflow, and then deploy and share those analytics at scale for deeper insights in hours instead of weeks. Um, the Alteryx Analytics platform, it can connect to and cleanse data from data warehouses, cloud applications, spreadsheets, and other sources, easily join that data together, blend it together, then perform analytics such as predictive, statistical, and spatial using an easy and intuitive user interface, uh, no coding necessary. Uh, you'll see this when we get into the demo, the drag and drop workflow and how it's like really easy to, to build it all together. Um, so again, Ali will go into more detail about that when, when we show you the demo of how we use Alteryx to improve self analytics. Um, as far as Power BI, Miguel, would you kindly give us an introduction on Power BI? Of course, Dan. Thank you, and hi, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Power BI is as of now, it's basically Microsoft offering uh, for business intelligence, data analytics, and data visualization. Um, as you can see here, we have a very simple um, diagram that shows all the data that you can connect to, including, of course, Alteryx directly into Power BI. And just to give you an idea of, of the short period of time that where Power BI has been out in the market and the success that it has. It has over 5 million subscribers in 210 countries and more than 200,000 organizations. And actually, this data is from March this year. As you can imagine, this keeps going and going. Um, the key components of Power BI are, of course, it's Azure-based, so it runs in Azure. Um, it's uh, browser-based. It has all um, mobile uh, apps on any platform that you can think of. And also, it has a companion app called Power BI Desktop. So we cover all the analytics process from uh, tapping into data, um, modeling it, um, visualizing it, and then, of course, consuming it, which is the biggest part of Power BI, and that's what we're going to see today, taking data from Alteryx using all of their uh, goodness. Thank you, Dan. Cool. 
Uh, did you want me to go through these other slides, or I guess we could just fast forward through them? Yeah, let's look forward to them. So just the biggest components, you're going to see dashboards, uh, which is the main component of Power BI. That's where you can choose what you want to highlight from the data that you have. Once you click on those uh, tiles on the dashboard, you can uh, double click, and that's going to be much more clear in the demo. Uh, the things that we're trying to solve with Power BI, uh, the, the data challenges that you see, especially in sales organizations. Like it's a very slow process, time consuming to uh, clean up the data. That's where Alteryx comes in and also share that data and keep it in a one source of the truth, and, and that's where Power BI gets in. Uh, tactical meaning, it's very easy to share, uh, so you solve that problem of poor visibility of the same KPIs and the same metrics for everyone. And then um, the requirement of IT, if you want, like on, on the old BI, uh, so to call it, uh, that's where you go and you ask for a report and you get it back, or you get access to a data and you analyze it in Excel. Power BI is trying to solve for that, again, keeping that data at one single location where everyone is seeing that same source but at the same time flexible enough that you can ask your own questions. If you can move to the next one. Um, well, I think I already answered this. Uh, this is how Power BI tackles uh, those, which is accelerating the results, transforming being more strategic, real time, getting access to that data by the second, uh, and work together more effectively. Next. Well, thanks, Miguel. Oh, thank you, sir. All right, cool. So now that you've been introduced to us and the technology is being used today, let's go ahead and jump into the presentation. What we're going to be discussing is we're going to explore three ways in which to get sales insights quicker with more efficient and effective preparation and visualization of your data. Uh, specifically, we will discuss how to improve sales forecasting by easily blending all your relevant sales data from multiple sources in a tenth of the time it would probably usually take you to do it manually. Um, or through other more cumbersome and complex processes. Two, we'll, we'll explore how to gain deeper insights into your sales data by utilizing predictive analysis with no coding required. And three, how to visualize your sales data to uncover trends and relationships that can help you, uh, help you with customer profiling and targeting offers. So to begin, let's talk about the overall data process first. So analysts, like yourself, depend on massive amounts of data to produce actionable insights so that your decision makers can quickly react to the ever-shifting customer demands and business needs. And to keep up with the pace of business, you rely on this data to drive deeper insights that help answer strategic questions. Now, sales data comes in many forms and from multiple sources. We all know that. There's a lot of things that you can get sales data from. Uh, but that data can be messy, incomplete, and a lot of times difficult to process. And oftentimes, the data requires significant manual preparation and blending and cleansing before you can analyze the results and deliver answers to your organization in a timely manner. So it's no secret that analysts spend significant amounts of time blending and preparing data for analysis and reporting. In addition, you might have to enrich the data as well as perform advanced analytics like predictive or geospatial analysis to generate deeper insights into what your data is telling you. Then you need to analyze, share, and visualize the data to help your decision makers better understand the insights in order to react to business needs and customer demands. And so typically, this entire data preparation to insights process could take you up to several weeks to perform, even months if you have a big, large pro project and you're dealing with large, complex data sets. Um, the problem is that in today's fast-paced world, Spending weeks to generate insights is, is not ideal. And so we took a survey of organizations, and as you can see here, um, spending weeks to generate insights caused delays, and these delays are causing real business problems. One such problem is business sales opportunities, which account for 37% of the total business area impact, the most versus any other reason on here. So losing out on potential sales opportunities definitely has a very negative effect on your business. We also learned that organizations want insight in hours or less. Reacting rapidly is very important as decision makers strive to identify new sales opportunities. Hence, you need a better way to quickly visualize your data to produce deeper insights, again, thus speeding up your time to insight. So to give you an idea of how these two issues are being addressed, we're going to use an example, uh, a use case from Mazda, who is actually uh, using both technologies in conjunction to address their sales analytics problems. To give you a brief background, uh, Mazda 
Mortar Corporation. They presented at a recent Inspire conference, and so let's take a look at what they're doing. So Mazda has been around since 1920. They employ 44,000 employees globally. The company is headquartered in Irvine, California, and if you're not aware of the cars they produce, they produce such automobiles as the popular RX-7 and the Miata. Um, at Mazda, their group manager of retail programs and CPO for North America faced several key business intelligence challenges while he and his team were working with sales data. So some of those challenges were analysts had to hard code, hard key PDFs to Excel in order to be able to analyze the data from those, from those uh, PDFs. And this generated a lot of static reports, lots of combined reports in Excel. Analysts would also receive reports in different formats. Um, he mentioned that at, for most of the time, analysts would take up to eight hours per week on their own just to make one combined report for the execs. With all the different reports floating around, there were multiple versions of the truth amongst the departments. And so cross-functional teams would spend hours in meetings arguing about what a sale, quote unquote, a sale was and how it should be classified in various reports. Uh, furthermore, there were not a lot of data people that could take a problem and think about it in a database or a data analytics type of way. Hence, doing data analysis was not always easy. So lots of time and resources were spent on these issues. Now, enter in Altrix and Microsoft Power BI uh, that they brought in to help them solve these issues and reduce the time spent from analysis to insight. Basically, what, what was done is Altrix enabled Mazda to reduce the time spent in data blending and preparation by eliminating manual processes and complexity to perform fast and dynamic data mashing across data sources for new insights and then three, eliminate delays caused by waiting on others with the technical R coding skills needed to perform predictive analysis on the data. Essentially, bridging the gap between a non-technical analyst skills and the technical knowledge needed or required to perform predictive analytics. As far as Microsoft Power BI is concerned, that empowered Mazda to gain insights very quickly into what was going on in their sales territories and, and with um, you know, their sales regions by allowing them to export their sales data to Power BI for manipulation of visualizations instantly. So let's take a look at what Mazda did. So the first thing is Mazda wanted to know how many retail vehicles were sold by month by market. And I'm sure this is probably something common that a lot of sales organizations face. Like how do we drill down deeper into our data to understand what we're selling by region, by month, by market, whatever the you know, parameters are. So Mazda combined that data with data on what competitors were spending on incentives. And this gave them a clearer view of what happened one to two months ago. Before this, there were a lot of anecdotes. For example, so-and-so said that this dealer had a bad month because of weather. You know, so-and-so said that this dealer, you know, really, really sold a lot because of this reason, but no one really actually knew or could back up the real reason. So Mazda wanted to take a look, and now with the technologies, Mazda could look very carefully at what happened in specific markets and what actions competitors took to drive outcomes. Outcomes that provided insights into why Mazda was under or overperforming in specific markets. Another thing that they wanted to do is they developed a regression model to tell them on any given day of the month how many cars they would sell. So in the past, it was done on a gut feel. But this new information was then used by the accounting team to help with determining cash flow forecasts. And Mazda's sales team also uses information to determine how many cars their region should sell on any given day. So this enabled um, corporate to monitor if their cars were on track or off track to sell versus their objective based on the day of the month. Uh, for example, if they knew a Mazda 3, which is one of their cars, should sell about 1,000 units by the 15th day of the month, and after looking at the data, it is not selling that quickly, then that obviously told them, A, there's a problem, to B, something is going on that they need to investigate, and C, let's further drill down into data to see what that might be. So it got them, instead of trying to figure things out on a gut feel, it got them more clarity into why they were under or overperforming. And so by combining the power of Altrix and Power BI, Mazda was now able to, one, look at the industry from a new perspective by combining data streams to predict the future or at least have a reliable benchmark to assess performance, and three, focus on 
quote unquote, the next problem, not recurring problems. Now, you're all probably wondering, well, how did they do this? So to show you how Mazda utilized Alphatrix and Power BI, let's go ahead and demo some similar examples. We can't actually show you what they did because that's confidential, but we'll show you some similar examples of how you can easily blend all your relevant sales data from multiple sources, utilize predictive analysis with no coding, and then visualize your sales data to gain deeper insights. Um, and we'll start off with Miguel. If Miguel, first you could show us the uh, visualization piece of what Mazda would have used. Of course, and thank you. So it's good to show the end product uh, before we actually go into how it's built. So that's good. Let me share my screen, and please let me know when we can see it. See it. Here we go. Okay, it says that I'm sharing, so please let us know if everyone can see it. If not, yep. I can see it in another minute. Okay, perfect. So what you see here is the main screen of Power BI. What you see to the left is the menu that we have, where you have your dashboards, which is that Uber um, level uh, view of your business. Uh, you have your reports, which is uh, which are the drill downs to all the data that you have, and you have the data sets. All of these components have um, several uh, features that make analysis and data visualization very, very interesting. Um, what you will get out of Altrix on the demo that we're going to see after is basically a data set. So let me show you what the experience to build a visualization looks like in Power BI. We'll do something very simple. Um, let me go to, I think I have one safe here. So as you can see, you have the blank canvas. Uh, if I click on edit report, uh, you're going to see all the data available from that data model in particular. And we can do things as simple as like search for sales, We'll go with net sales, drag and drop, and then we'll see if there's a country on that data set also, which hopefully there will be. Yeah, there is. And just again, with drag and drop, you get very simple data visualizations. Um, of course, the idea here is that you can represent the data any way you want it. So because this is geographical data, I can click on a map, and that comes from the model, uh, different types of maps, um, the bubbles. Uh, we have some very cool um, custom visualizations that you can find on this gallery. Uh, there's uh, tens of them, so uh, I actually just grabbed one just to show you what that looks like. Uh, you import the custom visualization, I click on it, uh, and you should get this very cool 3D-like, which again, is not very useful in this particular case, uh, but you can see what are the effects or the different type of visualizations that you can get. Once you're happy with your visualization, you will get to a place that is something like this. Let's say this. These are the reports. As you can see, we have several pages down here. This is your the the heart of your data visualization class report. Here's where you have all the details. You have slicers. Um, you have different types of visualizations. Uh, each page in this case represents one of the uh, of the different topics that we wanted Mazda to take a look at. Uh, so in this example, you're seeing a pipeline report where you can see all the opportunities in each stage, what are the different uh, opportunities value by account, uh, the opportunity values by product category, so on and so forth. Um, this is where you actually go and choose what you want to pin to your dashboard. The dashboard, again, remember, is that over version or vision of what you want to share with your colleagues uh, or with other people. Uh, the simple, like, the, the way you pin something to a dashboard is simply clicking on that uh, pin icon that you see. So when you click on that, that's where you choose you're going to send something to the dashboard. And what you see here is a summary of all the different pages that I showed you on that previous report. Uh, so why don't we start playing around with this a little bit and see what happens. Um, one of the coolest features of Power BI, and, and if you remember I mentioned before when we were kind of describing a, a general view of Power BI, is that we want to make data accessible to everyone. Uh, the fact that you have an interactive visualization it's part of the deal, but we want to bring uh, data to everyone, even people that either don't know how to handle that, um, don't have the technical knowledge how to build a report like this. So the moment you share this, they have access to what we call uh, Q&A. Um, you have some representations here or some recommendations, so what you can ask, the idea is that you can ask in natural language things like, for example, margin by product. And then you can start forcing this. This is by product category, I guess, different recommendations as trim out. You can force the type of visualization to, oh, let me back here. 
not getting what I wanted. Let's see if I can get a better recommendation. Let's go with margin by, by product category mix. Uh, that's map. Let me see if I can force it that way. And then you can get a visualization that is basically representing all the things that you wanted. This is fully interactive. Uh, you can see you have tool tips. If you like what you're seeing, you can always pin this back to your dashboard. The moment people click on that tile in particular, they will get the same experience that you're seeing here. So it's a question that it's a natural language. It will give you uh, the response on the data in that way. Okay, let's get a little bit more tricky here. So for example, in the pipeline, we wanna know how we're doing versus target. Uh, we see that we're not meeting target yet on that gauge. Um, and we wanna know why. So for example, one great opportunity would be we have $16 million in the negotiation phase, which is very close to being uh, to being added to actual revenue. Uh, we can actually drill down on that, so I'll click on this little icon on top, and then when you actually interact with this visualization, you're gonna see that we drill down to the next level of that hierarchy, which comes from the model that you can build with Altrade. So here you can see all the sellers, and you can see who actually has the more dollars in that particular, um, in that particular stage. If I click on there, you can actually see that the account is salvage video, uh, which would be the account you have to go to that seller and ask them, hey, what's happening with this account? Can we move it forward? Because this represents a huge chunk, a huge chunk of, of the sales that we want. If I go back up, we can do things like, for example, I want to focus on the account type that is Platinum. If I click on Platinum, you're going to see all the data being updated. Okay, Southbridge again pops up, so that could be a huge opportunity for doing that. Uh, we have things like slicers uh, that you can see on the left. Let me show you a better example of a slicer here. If we move to sales performance. Oops, wrong tile. Here we go, sales performance. So we have a classic variant to, variance to budget by country. If we focus on Germany, which is the most negative one here, you can see that there's a huge difference, for example, in the target mix for electronic specs to the actual ones that we're selling. Uh, you can start drilling down the same way we did before, find out if we're giving too much discounts, you can actually find the root cause on why that difference to budget is occurring. Um, and then last but not least, going back to that uh, first thing that I mentioned, let's say you have that data set that you imported and you wanna know, uh, you want a quick analysis of the things that are related to each other. Uh, we have a cool feature called Quick Insights you go to that data set, you can see that it's working right here. And basically what the Power BI is doing is trying to relate all the variables from your model to give you a quick look, or let's say quick uh, stats on what's related to what. That comes in a way of a summarized table that we can check right now. These are the same tiles that I mentioned before. These are all fully interactive, you have tool tips. Uh, you can get, for example, what's influencing from the product point of view, the average finance to budget, um, the actual dollars finance to budget, uh, so on and so forth. This is kind of the bulk approach. If you want something specific, you can always go back to your dashboard and each tile actually will give you the option of doing those quick insights just particularly to the data that you're seeing on that tile. Um, and I think that's it, Dan. That, that was a very fast, but uh, I think very complete overview of Power BI. And I'll be answering yeah. questions on the Q&A tab if you guys have any more specific questions around Power BI. Just one quick question, Miguel. Uh, can you show again how you ping a report to a dashboard? Of course, let me do that right now. So the way this works is like, you're gonna see a menu that shows you how to, like which dashboard you wanna ping a report, but let's choose a random one here. Actually, let me, like using your question, I'm gonna show something else. As you can, you can imagine Power BI actually takes a lot of data sources. In this case, I have an Excel report. Um, let me show you what that looks like. You can actually pin an Excel piece or Excel table directly into Power BI. The way you do that, let me go to the report itself. Um, every visualization within the report, let me go to Python reports here, when you hover, over any of these particular tiles that you see, uh, any of these particular visualizations in the report, you're gonna see on top this little pin icon. When, oh, let me do this guy. When I click on it, you're gonna get a menu that tells you where do you wanna send uh, this particular um, 
uh, visualization. So in this case, I'm going to go sales dashboard. I'm going to say pin. I get the message that the pin was successful. I'm going to go to sales dashboard, which is the one that I was showing you before. You can see the tile here. And the way this works is you can move it around like you have full flexibility to what you want to do. You can resize it, make it bigger. You can move around the other tiles that you have. This is basically, this is where the art is uh, from the data analyst point of view, uh, showing the things that you want to show, the things that you want to highlight when somebody wants to drill down on something, that's the action of clicking on the tile, going into that particular report, and displaying the information that you want in that report. Did I answer your question, Dan? Yeah, uh, it, was, it was a question posed by uh, one of our attendees. So I just oh, wanted to thank you for highlighting that demo. while demoing. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Great. Okay, uh, let me give the control back to you. And I'll be answering yeah, the question uh, while we keep on the presentation. And, uh, and then we'll have some time at the end. So now that's the visualization part, but obviously to get to visualization, first we need to prepare, cleanse, blend the data to get it ready for analysis insight. So I'm going to hand it over to Ali, and Ali, if you could show us how that part of the data process works and what Mazda may have done to get their data ready for the analysis. Definitely sounds good. Go ahead and share my screen. All right, so sharing my screen, and what you see right now is the Alteryx designer that is sitting locally on my desktop. All right, so we're going to use Alteryx to build a workflow to do some data preparation, um, some aggregation, and predictive analytics uh, to prep a data set to then send to Power BI that we can then do some visualization on. Right. So the Alteryx designer is a workflow-based uh, tool, so we'll build our workflow on this canvas using the tools that are above the canvas. So you'll see that the tools are separated into uh, groups or categories based on functionality. So we'll see in out tools to connect to data sources or databases, different tools for data preparation. So whether that's you know cleansing data, which I'm going to show you. I know how to take out white space, applying a formula, imputing a null value. You have that avail uh, available. Different ways to join data sets together. So we could union or stack data sets on top of each other. We can join data sets together. So analogous to doing a VLOOKUP or even do fuzzy matching, right? So that allows us to match uh, strings that may not have the same exact spelling. Different ways to parse data. So if you've got log data, unstructured data you're pulling from the web, we can uh, always parse it using local expressions in, or text columns into a table. Right? The transform category of tools, where you'll see uh, tools allow us to aggregate the data and reorient the data as we want. Uh, we'll move into kind of the uh, more advanced analytics category of tools. So if you go to spatial, so if you're doing uh, spatial processing, if you're doing kind of mapping, point-to-point -point drives into distances, we do have that uh, available to do in Alteryx as well. And then the statistical piece, right? So we've built in R into the tool, so you can do different kinds of predictive models, maybe such as logistic regression, linear regression, forest models, but you don't have to do any coding. You're simply making selections via GUI. I'm going to show you this later because I'm going to build a time series model for our uh, workflow. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're generally going to get started by connecting to the data set. Right? So I can drag and drop a tool onto the canvas. Right? You notice as I do that, the configuration window for that tool changes, so I can configure this specific tool. Right? So we're first going to connect to a data. We're first going to connect to a local file. So I'm going to go to File Browse. Right? To give you an example of the files that we can pull in, you'll notice that we can pull in Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Access, uh, JSON files, and even unstructured text files. So I'm first going to connect to a CSV, right? so I made that data connection, and this CSV has data about our sales. So on each day, you know, our, our transaction level data, it shows us for each transaction what, what was the value of each of those sales. So I just pulled in one file, but Alteryx has some other capability as well. So you notice that there was about nine different files there. Uh, so if I wanted to actually pull in and have Alteryx automatically union them for me, I could do so by simply placing a wildcard here. So this, instead of just taking that sales underscore one file, take every file in that folder that actually starts with sales. And I could just place a star right there, which is a wildcard, right? So if I run the workflow here, we'll notice that it took all of these files, it read all of these files in, right? 
So about almost 12 files in here. Okay. Um, I can actually, see, anytime I read in the data alters, I can actually see what that data looks like just by clicking that little arrow or output node after it. Right. Again, so we can see that again, we have transaction level data I mean, that we're going to aggregate to on the month level later. So that's one way you can connect to data in Alteryx. Another way is we can connect directly to databases, right? So we do support almost all the major databases or anything that does have an ODBC connection, right? I have a SQL server that I'm connected to that I'm going to connect to. Uh, so I can simply cl uh, click that uh, database right there. You notice that I can see all the tables in the database, right? If I already have a SQL query written, I can just go ahead and copy and paste it in here. But I actually want to get the full database. So we'll just go ahead and click on that and have a connection to a table that's on my database. So this is one more month of data that was sitting somewhere else, right? Maybe it had to have some kind of correction done to it. But now we have that connection established, right? Um, so now that I have my connection established, I can start to build on my workflow, do my data preparation, um, what have you, right? So the first thing I want to do is union these data sets together. So I want to stack them on top of each other so we can get that um, kind of want together in one data stream. So if I go to the join category, select the union tool, you'll notice that it'll automatically make a connection if you put it close to the tool, and I can manually make the connection just by dragging it over. So what this tool is going to do is just stack the data set vertically. Right. If I put a browse tool, I can actually see the full data set as well. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and run the workflow. You'll notice the record count that we have here, 55,000 and 5,000. And now we have 60,000 records because coming out of the union because we were stacked, we stacked them vertically. Right? Um, if we look at the data itself, you can see we've got all sorts to let you know with these little red uh, arrows if the cell has trailing white space in it or needs to be cleansed, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is actually cleanse the data. Right? So go to preparation. I can actually use the data cleansing tool. So go ahead and drag it onto the canvas. I want to uh, cleanse all my fields uh, except for my uh, transaction date field. Right. Um, with this tool, uh, it's going to apply these functions to all those fields I've selected. So I'm going to replace nulls. Anytime there's a null value in a string field, I'm going to replace it with a blank. If there's a new null value in a numeric field, just replace it with a zero. Right. I also want to take away any leading and trailing white space and any tabs or line breaks. So any kind of characters that I may not probably wouldn't want the data. So I'm going to go ahead and run the workflow again. Okay. Right. And so if we actually click on the data, we can see those red, little red triangles I had before are no longer there because I don't have any more chilling white space on this field and my null values have been replaced. Right. Additionally, if you notice that uh, these were CSVs that came into here, so I can actually look at the metadata itself. Since this is a CSV, you'll notice that all of our field types are strings, right? We may not want that because we actually want, you know, some numeric fields, we might want to do some, some math on them or some a date fields, we want to do some, use some of the date time functions in Alteryx. So we're going to use an auto field tool to have Alteryx automatically type the fields for us, right? So we'll go ahead and run the workflow. What you'll notice now when you look at the metadata is that you can actually see the new types in the data. So you have integers, dates, and doubles, so on and so forth. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, apply a formula to the data. So if I use the formula tool, I can go ahead and do so. The formula tool allows me to apply formulas to any of the fields, or I can even create a new field by typing in a new field name, and that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to call a new field called month, right? We're just going to have it be the string. And what we're going to do with this field is we're going to format it. So if you looked at the data set before, right, we have this kind of date in there, but I want to actually create a new field that has the, the name of the, the month, January, February, March, so I can aggregate on it later. And what is the month number, right? So within this formula tool, there's a full functions library in here, right? So anything from doing if then statements, String functions, if you have any kind of survey response data, you want to look for a certain word, right, using the contain function. What I want to do is use a date time function to format my data to create a new field, and the function I'm going to use is the date time format. So I'm going to go ahead and double click that, and you'll see it populates this expression box, and I simply have to change these parameters, right? So the date time field I'm going to use 
they made that transaction date field. Right? And then with, there's a library within the formula to an alter to let you know what you can tell it to uh, get that out. So if I want to know, uh, transform that date, which was 01, 02, 1994, into one that just says Feb, I can know that from the Alteryx dictionary that I can actually just put in percentage sign, capital case B, and that'll do that for me. I also want to do uh, another field uh, called month number to tell me what's the, the number of that date. And I'm going to do that so I can sort on the data later before we put it into the time series model. So I can create a new field called month number, which will also be a string. I'll use that same function, date time format. Right, so we'll choose that same field transaction date. But this time I actually want to see it as a number, so I'm going to use the Syntax to show me that. Again, this is from the Alteryx Dictionary. There you go. And this is going to be lowercase m. All right. Click back on the canvas. Any red information went away. It means my uh, workflow won't run if I error it. And if I run the workflow, I can see those new fields that I've created. So if you look at this formula right here, scroll to the end, we can see these new fields I've created. So one, that's showing me what month that data comes in. The other is showing me the month number, right? And if I put up the browse to show you the full results, we can look at the other months as well, okay? So we've applied the formula now. The next thing I want to do is aggregate the data. So in Alteryx, you can easily aggregate or create views of the data using this summarized, this summarized tool, right? Apply that on the canvas. <coughs> Excuse me. Find which month we wish to aggregate to. In this case, it's going to be the month field. So I want to be, the data to be turn it from transactional level data and uh, daily data and aggregate to the month level and select the month field. Add the group by. I also want to see the month number in there, so we'll add a group by on that. Now everything I do, any metric I open now is going to be aggregated to this level. So if I want to know the total uh, retail sales per month, right? Select this field. Retail. Uh, let me just expand that for you. So this is the retail price of each transaction. I'm going to go ahead and add a sum. Right. I also want to know the number of units sold per each month. I'm going to go ahead and add another sum. Right. And in here I can actually also um, change the field name that's going to be presented. I'm going to change this to total sales. This is going to be total units. Right. And let's go ahead and place a browse tool after this. So again, this browse tool is letting me pop out the full data set instead of just seeing the preview at the node. So I'm going to go ahead and run the workflow. And what's neat about Alteryx is you can see the record counts going across. So we had the 60,000 records, right? We aggregated to the month level, so now we only have 12. Let's look here. We have our 12 months. We have the sales in each month and the number of units sold in each month. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is sort the data. Before we throw it into a time series model, that's going to predict for us basically what our projected sales should be per month on the next year out. Right. So we'll sort it so that we have it in the correct month order. So I'm going to go ahead and place the sort tool right here. I'm going to sort on the uh, month number, and we're going to sort in ascending. Right. So I'm going to go on the workflow. And all you can notice is this tool is just resorting the data. So now it's going to be in order January, February, March, what have you. Right. So we see that here, months 1 to 12. All right. Now that I have my data prepped, I'm actually going to run a predictive model. I'm going to do a time series model. So you have the ability to reinvent ETS models. Again, the, what the time series forecasting model is going to do is going to look at our historical monthly sales that we have. Right? Based on these historical monthly sales, uh, try to figure out 12 months out, what, are the, what can I expect my, months, my sales to be per month, uh, 12 months in the future. Right? So go ahead and go to that tool. Uh, the sales field that we're going to target the field that we're going to target to forecast on is total sales, and the data is monthly data, right? So really easy customization here. If you want to get into the weeds and you know how to, you're really good at uh, customizing your model, you have further uh, customization features in here as well. Right? So this will actually produce, uh, this tool will produce a report for us, right? Um, what it also does, it's producing the model, and then to get the uh, forecast values for the model, we just use a TS forecast tool. Place that over the object output, and 
to input uh, a browse tool there. And so the only configuration of this tool that we want to do, I'm going to, I can change the uh, confidence intervals if I'd like, but I just want to say, give me forecast, forecast in the future, 12 months out to the future. And let's go ahead and run the workflow. All right. So if you want to take a look at a report, the report of a model and how it did, I click this browse tool here. It's going to give us an interactive report showing us um, did it do well? What was the uh, information behind it? So you can see, got some plots for uh, ACF, PCF. We show here the trend of our, our monthly sales, basically, and what we're forecast to do out into the future. Right. And this is an interactive map. We get the values based on where our mouse goes. So this tool produced the model, which we can then use the forecast tool to provide the forecast for us, right? This is showing us for the next year out, that second year, for each month, what we can expect the forecasted sales to be. Right. So now I've finished building my model. You know, I like you know what we've been able to do so far is to connect to two different data sources. So that's two CSV files. So we read in about 11 CSV files with one tool exactly at the same time. Altrix had uh, the ability to union those for us. We read it in a SQL Server uh, table, so one of the sales tables that was in SQL Server, we unioned it, did our data preparation, our aggregation, built our predictive model, now we're going to finally output this data set, right? So the whole goal of this was to prepare the data for Power BI so we can visualize in Power BI, right? So Alteryx has a connection to Power BI Cloud, so if you go to our connectors, right, you'll see that here, right? Um, also want to highlight as well as Azure ML text analytics. So if you're doing any kind of sentiment analysis, text analytics on Azure, we actually have a connection to the uh, API to actually pull those scores back to you, right? But since I want to publish this data to Power BI, I can simply use a Power, publish to Power BI tool, right? I'm going to set a data set name, right? You can call this retail underscore August. We can give the table name RA, create a new table on my on Power BI, uh, and we'll go ahead and run the workflow. And this is going to publish it to Power BI for me. Um, generally, the first time you'll run this, it'll ask you to log into your Power BI account. But since I already have, because I ran this before, uh, it will probably automatically publish because I have the ref refresh token initiated. Right. <clears throat> so. Now I've created this new table on Power BI. I can actually go log into my account on Power BI, right? and we can see this one that I've just uploaded, Retail August. Right? So I'll switch over to that data set, and you can see the fields that are in there. Right? I have the fields that are in there. I have the, the prep data set. I don't have to worry about doing the prep in here, and I can start to build out my visualization. Right? So I can start, you know, put out forecast, period, and I've got, I can start to build out my, my charts and my graphs. So that's kind of how the two would work hand in hand together. You have Alteryx as this tool that's basically doing, you know, all that data preparation, forecasting for you, so that when you open and sending that to Power, uh, to Power BI, so that when you're sending it to Power BI, you're only worrying about really visual, visualizing it. Yep. So that does that for the demo for me. Um, Dan, happy to take any questions now or during Q&A. Yeah, no, thanks, Ali. Appreciate it. Uh, well, we'll move into Q&A because I know there are a few questions here that people have been posing. Uh, but before we do, just to conclude, so basically we've shown you how Mazda built a, we didn't show you their exact model, but similar to the predictive an analytics model that they built to help them forecast sales in any given month and territory. And then how they pushed that into Power BI, the dashboard Miguel showed you isn't their exact dashboard, but it's similar, and then that's what helped them be able to gain insights. Um, so using those two tools, they were able to, again, reduce the complexity and time spent on data preparation tasks, eliminate any delays in getting to that information quickly, they leveraged predictive analytics with no coding, and then as a result, they were able to generate more powerful visualizations 
to get to those insights better. That way they weren't working off anecdotes. So with that said, uh, let's move on to Q&A. We do have a few questions here. Um, and I'm going to start with you first, Ali, just since you are the most recent person. Uh, I have here an attendee that asks, does Altrix allow you to manually type case as opposed to the auto field tool? Yeah, definitely. And if you could still see my screen, you have, so what I showed you was the auto field tool. If you want to manually do it, there's a tool called select. Right, so I'm just going to drop it in here. And right, so select tool, you can see, I can see my fields in here. If I need to change anything, you know, from a string here manually to a double, but I want this to be an integer, you do have that ability to do so. Okay. Awesome. And I had someone here. Can you review the creation of the model step again? The if you're, if they're referring to the uh, the time series tools modeling tools, um, so you notice that uh, so this is doing it in a Rima ETS model. So we have two Rima ETS. I'm just choosing which is the field I want to forecast into the future. So I selected that field. It's asking me in what level is my data? Uh, what is the the time frequency of my data? And it's monthly, so I select, so monthly was already selected. So that's basically all the configuration I did there. For the actual forecast, for the data that shows me what the forecast is, use the TS forecast tool. And all I showed here is basically it's how many periods into the future do you want to forecast? And I set that to 12. Right. <clears throat> okay, great. And then, sticking with just because there's a lot of questions coming in on this, is there any chance that one can run a partial workflow? So what you can do in Altrix is you can actually disable pieces from running. Right, so I can put a tool container around a piece and have it not run. So if I had a separate branch, maybe I didn't want to run this every time because I want to do a separate branch here, I can put a tool container around that to disable it. Um, but currently you cannot only run, you cannot run uh, just a piece of it. But that is changing with our next release of Altrix. So you will, you currently you can't, but you will be able to. But I do have the ability right now to disable pieces from running. By putting it in the container tool. By putting it in the container tool, that's awesome. correct. Cool, okay. So this next question actually ties into both products. Um, so someone asked, you know, as you're working with data and you're building out your models and, and getting all that data prepped, uh, is there a way to automate the publishing to Power BI from Altrix? And if so, what frequencies are available? And then Miguel, mm -hmm. to follow up that, I'll ask, I'll, when, while he's done answering that, I'll ask you a follow-up question, Miguel. Yep. So yeah, you do have the ability to schedule workflows to run at a you know, certain time frequency. Um, you can pretty much set any frequency you want. So directly from here, I could either uh, schedule this to my desktop, or if I have an Altrix server, schedule it directly to the Alt Altrix server. Right. Let me just show you that scheduling piece real quick. Right. So save my workflow. You have a scheduling console where I can you know, schedule it at once, any minutes, days, months, uh, a custom schedule. So maybe it run the third Friday every month. So you have that ability to do so directly in Altrix. And then, so when you schedule that, and obviously the ending piece of the workflow is to push to Power BI, that will also automatically update the data in Power BI. That is correct. Okay. Yep. Cool. Exactly. So that you could add. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, and so Miguel, to follow up with that, once the data is updated in Power BI and you go into your Power BI account and it's there ready to go, um, to follow up with that, can one share the data, you know, with others? The, the dashboard, uh, not the data, sorry, the dashboards or the visualizations in Power BI, can one share that with others? Exactly, yes, and actually, great point because I don't know how I missed that from the demo itself. Uh, Ali, if you can give me uh, the screen back, I can actually show where the button is. It's very easy to find, but let me sure. do that real quick. Sure. Here we go. So I'm um, back here on the dashboard that we were looking at before. You're going to see on the top right here, the share button. It's as easy as clicking on that share button. You can get access to either people within your organization, so your same domain, or people outside your organization. The other requirement is that they all need a Power BI um, account. Uh, that's it. You can include an optional message too, and then uh, some settings that allow you to either um, allow you to allow your uh, the people you're sharing the dashboard with, with to share it, uh, and if you want to send an email notification. 
and once you are part of that sharing um, of that shared dashboard, let me go back here. You can actually see notifications. So these are all the dashboards that are basically being shared with me. Uh, if there are any changes, uh, alerts. Uh, if the data changes, you're gonna get also a notification here, or if you choose to an email into your inbox. Great. Now, staying on that screen, Miguel, and staying with that dashboard, mm -hmm. uh, another question. For the Power BI sales dashboard, the one that you're being that you're showing right now, is that a pre-built dashboard that can be shared with users so that we can utilize it for our own purposes, or was that built from scratch? This is this was built from scratch. You have several options to that. So this particular dashboard, um, going back to what I explained before, like all the different components uh, that you have here on on Power BI. The dashboard is something that you build every single time you have reports. So once you have a report here, like this one in particular, uh, you choose what you send to the dashboard. That's the one that actually, oh, let me make this bigger. Um, there we go. You are the one that chooses what goes into the dashboard. So that one in particular, it cannot be saved as, uh, let's say, a template. The reports themselves, uh, depending on how you create them, this can be saved as, as an actual Power BI desktop file. Um, I'm not sure you can actually download this. I think that's on a roadmap, but I, uh, I'm not sure it's out yet. Uh, and in the particular case of Alteryx, where you connect directly to a cloud service, it's gonna be very hard for you to replicate this as a, as a template. What we actually provide people with, if you go to our community website, we have all these dashboards, actually the Power BI website and the community website you have all these Power BI desktop files that you can download and replicate as much as you can. You can see the structure of the model, uh, if you want to replicate that on Alteryx, and then what are the actual visuals that we're using. So if I would have to give a recommendation to someone, like, let's say you want to replicate exactly what we have here, the easiest way to go would be to build the model with Alteryx first, and then kind of go one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on, on the different, the actual data that you have and replicating those visualizations. Um, Power BI Desktop allows you to say templates, so once you do that and you export it to Power BI Desktop, then you would be able to replicate that. But it's very, it's very specific to the data model and the data structure you have. So even if we make this available, which we actually we did, uh, based on, on another webinar we did a couple of months ago, um, it's gonna be very hard for you to just take that and replace the data and come up with the exact same dashboard from a template. Okay, great. Uh, sticking on that report, so two questions here actually related just to this screen. Um, we had one attendee mm -hmm. ask, does Power BI tool allow you to schedule reports to be distributed? And the other one is um, in regards to reports, oh, where did it go? It says, just to be clear, with Power BI, you start with the reports and then create the dashboard, or is that not true? Correct. So I should have been more clear. Let me answer the second one first. So if you remember, and actually on Alice Demo too, um, once you have the data set, which is what we had here, uh, this is where you create the report. So you start drag and dropping like different types of um, uh, KPIs and measures uh, like we were doing here before with country. So let's say this is my uh, very complete dashboard, which just has a bar chart of sales and countries. You save this. That's gonna be a report that's gonna be saved here. And once you have that complete report, like the one that we uh, showed before, then you start pinning back uh, to the actual dashboard. So let's say you don't wanna share all this information, so you just pick and choose the ones that you actually wanna to send to a dashboard, like this one and this one. That's where you actually get that Uber level view, which is the one that you actually share. So when you share something with a, with a colleague, they're gonna, this is the first thing that they're gonna see. They can interact with it in different ways, as in Q&A, uh, click on any child that will take them to the actual report, but the process where you build this dashboard is you need the data set first, which is what we show with Alteryx. Uh, you build a report, which is what we showed here on the, on the browser. Once you have the report, you select the specific visuals that you want on the dashboard, uh, even images, which is the case that we have here. These are just like for show. Uh, where we're gonna show people on dashboard what's information being displayed, that's where you actually get this end product dashboard that we're seeing here. And then can you remind me about the first question? Uh, oh, schedule. Um, uh, the so, reports, can they themselves be shared? Yes. No, no, you, sorry. If they can be shared, they can be scheduled. Is that what you're saying? 
sorry, so does the Power BI tool allow you to schedule reports to be distributed? Oh, okay, perfect. So the idea in Power BI is that whenever you get to the system, these uh, web access, the mobile apps, uh, any access point for Power BI, even the emails that you get telling you that data was updated or say I'll see the threshold, all of that data is going to be up to date. So there's actually no need for you to actually keep reminding people that the data is updated uh, or that you updated something. Every time they go to Power BI, they're going to get the latest. So it's going to depend, again, in the specific case that we showed on the webinar today. If you schedule up updates from Altrix, as long as those are happening and successfully being pushed into the cloud, every time somebody comes into this dashboard, they're going to get the latest data. So by default, there's no way of just reminding people, hey, remember the dashboard is here. The way, the way that's going to show is going to be how you set up the emails and the updates and the alerts for people to know if something is being shared with them, if data was updated, or if you actually had an alert set up on one specific API that hit a threshold, let's say sales fell under $2 million per month. You get an email in your inbox, you click on that email, they take you to this dashboard, and you get the latest view of the data here. Okay, great. So I just have a couple more questions, and then Shannon, I'll, I'll pass it back to you. But uh, two for Ali, one for, for Miguel. Miguel, can a PDF be created of the dashboard itself? Yes, of the dashboard itself. Oh, that's a great question. Actually, the print option that we have is on reports. So if we go back to the report here, you can see here on file that you can print the report. It's not PDF. Uh, by default, you can use any PDF writer uh, to just export this into, a, into an actual PDF. But you can print it, uh, capture it, or export it to PDF any way you want with this option. Okay, great. And then, Ali, back to the Altrix workflow. Uh, first question, can the workflow be initiated via an API call? Sure, yeah. So uh, we do, there is an Altrix API. Uh, so with the Altrix server, you can actually uh, call an Altrix workflow to run and return data back to something like a web service. Like. Okay. And then second question, can the Altrix workflow endpoints be published as services such as RESTful services, SOAP services, et cetera? Yeah. So uh, kind of, I think that's very related to that, the first question. So you, you can... Uh, you can have uh, the, the via an API interface. You can actually pass data. Uh, so the in input endpoint, you can pass data to an Altrix workflow, and then have the other endpoint, the output return via the API to whatever is calling it. <clears throat> okay. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks everyone for submitting your questions. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Shannon, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you all for this great presentation and demonstration. And just to answer another question that often comes up, just a reminder, I will be sending out a follow-up email within two business days. So for this webinar by end of day Thursday with links to the slides, the recording of the session, and anything else requested throughout. Uh, and thanks to our attendees for being so involved in everything that we do and asking such great twists questions. Um, and then, of course, we want to give thanks and shout out to Alteryx for sponsoring today's webinar. I hope everyone has a great day.